Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to continue reading from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. We are on uh, Chapter 7, Nuclear Reactors, page 159, and we are on the new subtitle, which is going to be quite fun, Insurance Firms Reluctant to Assume Nuclear Risks. Uh, but above and beyond the normal day-to-day -day operations, there exists the possibility of an accident, either minor or major, and we have minor ones all the time. As we indicated earlier, a study conducted by the Brookhaven National Laboratory indicated that a major accident with a nuclear power reactor could result in the deaths of several thousand individuals and cause some seven billion dollars in property damage. Now that was 1970, imagine what it is now, it would probably be trillions. Because of this, the cancer, I'm sorry, <laughs> the cancer industry, oops, Freudian slip there. Because of this, the nuclear power industry in, its, in this country would not even exist if it were not for the Price-Anderson Act, which limits the liability of nuclear reactors to $560 million. Even then, the private insurance underwriters in this country will only underwrite some 100 million of this 560 million liability limit. The private insurance in, in underwriters do not have that much confidence in this fledgling industry. An important question then is how safe are nuclear reactors? To answer this question, let us quote from Walter H. Jordan, Assistant Director of the Oak Ridge National Laboratory and a member of the AEC's Reactor Safety Boards. He states, The important question still remains. Have we succeeded in reducing the risk to a tolerable level, that is, something less than one in a chance, something less than one chance in 10,000 that a reactor will have a serious accident in a year? Have we succeeded in reducing the hazard to such a low level? There is no way to prove it. We have accumulated so far some hundred reactor years of accident-free operation of commercial nuclear power stations in the U.S. Listen to the way these fuckers frame the information. A hundred reactor years accumulated. Putting them all together, five, 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 five. What a motherfucker. We have accumulated so far some 100 reactor years of accident-free operation of commercial nuclear electric power stations in the U.S. This is a long way from 10,000, so it does not tell us much. The only way we will know what the odds really are is by continuing to accumulate experience in operating reactors. There is some risk, but it certainly is worth it. And then that's the end of his quote. And this is Tamplin and Goffin writing. How safe are, reactor, are, how safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote from a consulting engineer, Don Ackerman of Madison, Wisconsin. Quote, an independent consulting engine, as an independent consulting engineer, I have been active for many years in alerting the engineering profession to its overriding responsibility in design and construction of safe atomic power plants. The simple fact that none of the atomic power plants currently in operation or under construction have been designed with the traditional concepts of engineering responsibility and ethical commitment for maximum public safety. Unquote. Let me read that sentence again. The simple fact is that none of the atomic power plants currently in operation or under construction have been designed with the traditional concepts of engineering responsibility and ethical commitment for maximum public safety. Unquote. Oh. How safe are nuclear power reactors? Let us quote from Robert L. Whitelaw, a professor of law at the Virginia Polytech Institute and formerly project engineer for the design and construction of the power plant for the nuclear ship Savannah. Quote, 
I wish to fully endorse the principal argument advanced by A.J. Ackerman in his paper, and perhaps strengthen the impact of his paper with this brief discussion. Now remember, A.J. Ackerman is the, just, the man I just quoted, okay? His principal argument has been confirmed by my own experience of the past 15 years on nuclear projects and problems of various kinds. This experience includes preparing proposals and nuclear hazards evaluations on a variety of nuclear power plants, both commercially and militarily. It has been my observation that despite the enormous amount of meticulous detail which the ACRS regularly requires on every projected power plant to satisfy itself that there is no credible accident, that can be threat that can threaten the public or even the operators and that despite the volumes of papers and hours or presentations consumed on this topic and no doubt well intentioned there is still a common consent of unwritten agreement to treat as quote incredible unquote the most fearful of all nuclear accidents that can occur in any power any plant with the highly pressurized primary system such an accident is, of course, the explosive rupture of the primary vessel itself, which is ruled out of the list of credible accidents for the simple reason that there is no adequate answer for, the, for putting the plant underground or inside a mountain, as Ackerman has pointed out. These motherfuckers, I'm just dumbfounded, you guys. How safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote the first chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, David Lilenthal. He states, Once a bright hope shared by all mankind, including myself, the rash proliferation of atomic power plants has become one of the ugliest clouds hanging over America. How safe are nuclear reactors? He keeps asking this question. He's asking all these professionals. How safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote from Dr. Edward Teller, the devil, often called the father of the hydrogen bomb and one of the outstanding supporters of the AEC. Now, this is from the devil himself. The, the devil states, or Dr. Teller states, a single major mishap in a nuclear reactor could cause extreme damage, not because of the explosive force, but because of the radioactive contamination. So far, we have been extremely lucky, but with the spread of industrialization, with the greater number of simian monkeys, when it, I don't know what that means. With the greater number of simians monkeying around with things they do not completely understand, sooner or later a fool will prove greater than the, than the proof even in a foolproof system. Sooner or later a fool will prove greater than the proof even in a foolproof system. Fuck you. Oh, I hate that man. How safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote from a letter from the AEC Advisory Committee of Reactor Safeguards concerning a reactor plant in Midland, Michigan, which I, I bet is there. A number of permanent residents within five miles of the plant site was estimated to be 41,000 in 1968, mainly in the city of Midland and its environs. The applicant has applied for, has established criteria for, and has begun the formulation of a comprehensive emergency evacuation plan. In considering the safety of nuclear reactors, it is important, oh, now this is, I'm sorry, I should have said quote. So let me say this. How safe are nuclear reactors? Let us quote from a letter of the AEC Advisory Committee Reactor Safeguards concerning a reactor plant in Midland, Michigan. Quote, a number of permanent residents within five miles of the plant site was estimated to be 41,000 in 1968, mainly in the city of Midland and its environs. The applicant has established criteria for and has begun the formulation of a comprehensive emergency evacuation plan, unquote. 
Huh. In considering the safety of nuclear reactors, is it, it is important to recognize that each nuclear reactor in this country is an experiment. It is important to recognize that each re nuclear reactor in this country is an experiment. Each reactor is different from all other reactors. Whether or not it will operate and or operate safely depends upon the outcome of the experiment. I bet you that makes all of you people back east feel really great. Before and subsequent to the granting of the construction permit, the design of these reactors is modified. This is one of the reasons why nuclear power plants are costing more than originally estimated. For example, the cost for a plant in Fort Calhoun, Nebraska is now twice the original estimate. Another consequence of these modifications is that the startup date for the nuclear power plant is usually much longer than when it was anticipated. For example, the Fort Calhoun plant will now be a year later in its startup operation if nothing adverse occurs in the intervening period. The hoped for low cost of nuclear power plants was of course one of the major reasons why many utilities rushed in to buy these plants. The subsequent drastic increase in the cost of the plants and the delays in their construction however has cooled many utility companies enthusiasm for nuclear power plants. These guys are just complete I mean, really, they're just genocidal fucking maniacs. Who are they? You know what? They're not doing it for energy. They're doing it for something else. New subtitle. Construction flaws are detected after operations begin. Motherfucker. But the experimental phase of the nuclear reactors is not over when they go into their operational phase. After these reactors have been operating for a period of time, Flaws in their construction are uncovered, and expensive retrofits are often necessary. In the case of many of the first generation of plants, they had to be shut down and were never really operable. The new plants, which are under construction and in operation today, are also experiencing these errors in their experimental design. Nuclonics Week published a fairly large discussion on the problem, uh, on the problems developed with furnace-sensitized stainless steel in critical areas of the reactor. Uh, this article indicates that the trouble was encountered at Oyster Creek, Terrapur, Nine Mile Point, and La Crosse. These problems developed in furnace-sensitive stainless steel these problems developed in furnace-sensitized stainless steel safe ends and other miscellaneous supports in the reactors. Oh my God! A somewhat similar problem developed in the Indian Point reactor on May 20th. In this particular case, small pieces of material were found circulating in the cooling water. Since the, reactor was, since the reactors were constructed in order to meet critical power needs, it appears quite possible that beginning in the year 1970, brownouts will recur as a result of their failure. Let us hope that none of these failures will be a serious accident. Well, actually what it really proved is, guess what? We don't fucking need their energy. They don't really give us that much. They say they do and they just fucking lie about it. Sorry to cuss you guys. I'll try to watch my language. To go on further concerning the safety of nuclear reactors, considering the unhappiness of the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards with the AEC's Reactor Safety Program and execution as discussed by Nuclonics Week. Quote, Reactor safety research has been an ever more bludgeoning victim of the budget pressures on AEC. Huh. And the, <clears throat> and the Advisory Committee of Reactor Safeguards is unhappy both about the diminishing supply of safety research funds and about some of the decisions AEC is making on how to spend the funds. Wow. ACRS is dim dismayed over the constantly shrinking reactor safety effort at AEC. 
Huh. Advisory Committee. The Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards is dismayed over the constantly shrinking safety effort at AEC by AEC's failure to follow through on many ACRS recommendations for safety R&D and by the, slug, sluggishness, by the sluggishness that the AEC at the AEC that makes it virtually impossible to get a speedy investigation of a specific problem that might arise during a project review. By the AEC's failure to schedule certain R&D for whatever reason in these specific areas. Water reactors. Despite recommendations of both ACRS and the regulatory staff for more R&D on fuel failure and partial or large-scale large core melting, only small or modest efforts have been initiated thus far." Unquote. This was in 1970, you guys, and it's only gotten seriously worse. I know I shouldn't drink coffee, but I like it. These complaints by the AEC's Advisory Committee in Reactor Safeguards suggest that the present reactors and those under construction are even far more experimental than we might have imagined. The complaints on the part of the ACRS do little to allay our fears concerning the safety and reliability of nuclear power reactors. How safe and reliable are nuclear power reactors? Unfortunately, it appears that no one really knows. The people of the United States are being asked to engage in a gigantic experiment. We're not actually being asked. We're being forced. We're not asked. We're forced. So the camera's over here. See, it's easier if I sit right there, but I wanted the sign, so I'm going to have to look over there when I talk to you. It looks weird, but I will. God dang. The stakes in the experiment may be extremely high, and the losers paying off possibly with their lives. We mean possibly, definitely. We're definitely losing our lives. This is incredible when one, one considers that we have acceptable alternatives to nuclear power reactors. One such alternative that we have in this country is about a 200 year supply of coal. The following comments by, Doc, by Mr. Baguet, Vice Chairman of the Federal Power Commission, suggest very strongly that we have put our eggs in the wrong basket and that we should proceed forthwith to modify this mistake. Which I think after this time they actually did stop the nuclear reactor building and they ended up like uh, going into coal. And now, what, 20 years later, we discover that part of the worst part of the coal industry is they dig up nuclear energy that's deep under the earth and leave it on the top. So it all gets down to nuclear science. That's the monster in the room. Hmm. And this is from Mr. Baggy. Quote, The commitment by this industry to nuclear power generation also lies in the root of the power crisis. Stimulated by government policy, utility planners envision nuclear power as the answer to future expansion of their generating capacity and placed an inordinate amount of their eggs in the nuclear basket. And now the chickens have hatched and, here com and come home to roost. Although these vast nuclear generating complexes were welcome additions to the fight against air pollution, they created a new problem of thermal pollution which these, this industry for a while insisted on characterizing as thermal enrichment. <laughs> economy, has also, economy has also been one of the virtues of this mode of power generation. Now, however, the statistics from recently installed units were knocking earlier costs. Now, however, the statistics from recently installed units were knocking earlier cost predictions out of the hat. The cost of skilled labor, quality control, and stricter safety measures all acted to askew investment curves beyond acceptable limits. New units did not become operational on schedule, and suddenly the manufacturers were reporting that the orders for new nuclear facilities had dropped to the level of the 1950s. 
The hard fact had to be faced. Nuclear power generation was not the great panacea we had envisioned, unquote. Oh, Lord, I'm at 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to stop, and I will see you guys again another time. I make an effort not to go too many days in between, um, but I have to admit, I'm super busy, so it might be another day or two before I get back to this. But check this out. Like, This is where we're at, folks. We're mostly through the book. And I have to say, this has been an interesting little journey for me. I have never read anything online. I'm not a public speaker. But um certainly has educated me. I hope it's educating you. And uh, talk to you soon. Ciao. Put your courage feet on.